Well, this might interest you. The universe is infinite but bounded, and therefore, a beam of light, in whatever direction it may travel, will after billions of centuries return, if powerful enough, to the point of its departure. And it is no different with rumor that flies about from star to star and makes the rounds of every planet. One day, Trell heard distant reports of two mighty constructor benefactors, so wise and so accomplished that they had no equal. With this news, he ran to Caporcius, who explained to him that these were not mysterious rivals, but only themselves, for their fame had circumnavigated space. In those days, Trell was exceedingly vain receiving all marks of veneration and honor paid to him as his due and a perfectly normal thing. I'd been flying for quite some time, passing these spheres full of the clamor of war, as well as spheres that had finally obtained perfect peace and desolation. When suddenly, a small planet came into view, really more a stray fragment of matter than a planet. Celsius the Tartarian, ruler of Pancreon and Cispendora. Our subjects, in a fit of regicidal madness, have driven us from the throne and exiled us here on this barren asteroid. And who are you? I'm Troll. Troll, the benefactor? Then you must help us immediately. You must restore us to our rightful position. They shall no longer prevent us from exercising our power. Let's go! Right now! I have no intention of complying with this request, as this would bring about untold evil and suffering. Yet, I wanted to comfort the humiliated king and consult him. I had this idea, which I knew would satisfy him completely without putting his former subjects in jeopardy. So, I rolled up my sleeves and, summoning up all my mastery, I built an entire new kingdom. I built towns, rivers, hills, forests, and brooks. A sky with clouds, armies full of daring do, citadels, castles, ladies' chambers. I made marketplaces, gaudium, gleaming in the sun. I made days of back-breaking labor, and nights full of dancing and song until dawn, and the gay tinkling of glasses. A handful of traitors. A sprinkling of heroes, a pinch of prophets and seers, one messiah, and one 
great poet. Here you are, sir. You can rule over it forever. With ease, you can program wars, quell rebellions, exact tributes, collect taxes, do everything you need to rule. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, I see. instructed him in the critical points and the transitional states of that micro-miniaturized society. In other words, I explained to him the, the ways of palace coups and revolutions. He was an old hand in the running of tyrannies and instantly grasped the directions and issued a few trial proclamations without much hesitation. These proclamations declared um, a state of emergency, a curfew, a special levy of uh, martial law. After a year passed in that kingdom, which amounted to no more than a few minutes of the king and I, uh, he abolished, he abolished by an act of the greatest magnanimity, by a flick of the finger, the controls, you see, he abolished one death penalty, uh, lightened the levy, and deigned to annul the special state of emergency. <laughs> you should have heard the people. A tumultuous cry of gratitude rose up from the box like the, the squeaking of tiny mouse lifted up by their tails. <laughs> and with the magnifying glass, we could see them on the highways, on, on the banks of the rivers, in the streets, uh, <laughs> rejoicing and praising the, the unsurpassed benevolence of their sovereign lord. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's a bit small. But I must admit that government is not measured in meters and kilograms. And their emotions seem genuine enough. Yes. Well, thank you. Hmm. Thank you. understood you correctly. Have you given that despot, that slave driver, that born sadist, a whole civilization to rule over forever? And do you tell me his people cried out for joy when he repealed a fraction of his merciless decrees? Troll, how could you do such a thing? I was joking, really. The whole kingdom fits into a box, uh, three feet by two by two and a half. It's only a model. A model? Of what? What do you mean of what? Of a civilization, obviously. Except that it's a hundred million times smaller. And how do you know there aren't civilizations a hundred times larger than ours? And is ours then a model? Anyway, what importance do dimensions have? A journey from the center of the box to one of the corners takes months for the inhabitants of the box. And don't they suffer? Don't they the burden of labor? Don't they die? Now, wait a minute. You know yourself that all these processes take place only because I programmed them, and so they aren't genuine. Oh, they aren't genuine. So the box is empty. And all these processions, parades, beheadings, are all a mere illusion. An illusion, no, since they have reality. They're purely a certain microscopic phenomena which I produce by manipulating atoms. The point is that all these births, loves, acts of heroism, denunciations are nothing but the minuscule caperings of our electrons in space which I arrange with all the skill of my craft, which of course... Enough of your boasting. Are these processes self-organized or are they not? Of course they are. And they occur within the infinitesimal clouds of electron charges. You know they do. They even when we dream. What happens in our brain but the binary algebra of connecting and disconnecting charges? The continual meandering of electrons. You have taken untold number of creatures capable of suffering and abandoned them forever to the rule of a merciless tyrant. Troll, you have committed a terrible crime. She has sophistry. It's, it's impossible to say whether they suffer in the process. 
The electrons jumping out in their heads will tell you nothing of that. But if I look inside your head, all I will see is also electrons jumping about. No, Troll. A sufferer is not somebody who hands you his suffering so that you can feel it, weigh it, bite it like a coin. A sufferer is somebody who behaves like a sufferer. Prove to me, here and now, that they do not suffer, that they do not think, that they do not in any way exist as conscious beings. Prove it to me. Prove that you only imitated suffering and did not create it. You know that's impossible. Even before I started, when the bus was still empty, I had to anticipate the possibility of just such a proof in order to rule it out. Otherwise, the, the monarch of that kingdom, sooner or later, would have got the impression that his subjects were not real subjects at all, but puppets, marionettes. Try to understand there was no other way to do it. I understand that. I understand that only too well. You set out with the noblest of intentions. You set out to create a kingdom so lifelike that nobody, but nobody could tell the difference. Well, in that you succeeded only too well. Only an hour has gone by since his return. But for them, the inhabitants of that box, whole centuries have gone by. How many generations have suffered. How many lives have been wasted and thrown away. And all to gratify the vanity of King Excelsius. think later. What do you intend to do when we get there? I'll take the kingdom away from him. And what will you do with it? I'll destroy it. I'll hold an election. Let the people choose a just ruler from among themselves. You program them all to be feudal lords or obedient serfs. What's the good of an election? First you'd have to change the whole structure of society and start again from scratch. And where does the changing of structure end and the tampering of minds begin? Somehow they managed to break through the walls of their box and occupy the asteroid. And he isn't there. What have they done with him? Look. They've discovered atomic energy. Look there. That seems to be the remains of the box. They've made it into some kind of temple. I did understand. It was only a model after all, a process with a large number of parameters, a mock-up for a monarch to practice on with the necessary feedback, variables, multistats. Yes, yes, but you over-perfected your replica. Not content with building a clockwork mechanism, you created something which was possible, logical, inevitable and you ended with the very antithesis of a mechanism please say no more